Hey guys, Becky here with Creative Fabrica, and I'm super excited to have you join me for another awesome tutorial. This time we have a really great home decor piece. We are making a personalized family cutting board. All right guys, so here we are in Cricut Design Space and we're just gonna go ahead and start a new project. Now, of course, I have already downloaded the SVG from the Creative Fabrica website. So I'm going to go to Upload and Upload Image and Browse. And this is going to open up my Downloads folder here. And I have already unzipped the folder file as well. Okay, so I'm going to double click, go to Main Files and select the SVG. Now sometimes that can be confusing because it shows up as an internet document, but just look for that SVG extension and click open. Now this is going to open the frame that I'm going to use and then I'll pair it up with a nice font. All right, so click on that SVG under recent uploads and add to canvas. Now we also want to go ahead and figure out the sizing that we need. So let's zoom out a little bit. What I'm gonna show you is how to use your shapes to achieve your sizing. So I'm gonna to go to my shapes and I'm gonna draw a square. And then from the square, I'm going to size it. So I'm gonna use my sizing options up here and I'm going to unlock my aspect ratio so I can type in the dimensions that I need. So I know that the width of this board is 11.25 and the height is about 12 inches. Now the board does have a little bit of um, like rounded edges, but for the most part, this is gonna work just fine. So the next I'm gonna go to arrange and send to back. And I'm gonna change the fill color to white just to make it a little bit more appealing. Um, that way I still have a nice border around it to visualize. And then I can just drag my SVG you can see that it's a little too big. That's fine. We're going to size it down until it looks how I feel it should look. All right. This helps with sizing a lot of projects and it looks like around 10 inches should be fine. Okay. Of course, you're free to make it as large or as small as you want. Once the sizing is done, we can go ahead and delete out the square. That's really all we needed it for. Now let's talk about adding the last name through the text. So I'm going to click on text here on the left hand side and I'll go ahead and type in whatever last name I need. In this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and do Anderson. My brother and sister-in-law are buying a new house. So this is a neat little uh, gift that I can make for them to go in the new house, a decor item. So under font, because I have clicked on my font under font, I can go ahead and search for the font that I'm looking for if I have one in mind, or I can scroll down. Now, if you are going to scroll, make sure you click over to system fonts and it will pick up the system fonts that you have installed. Now, the one I'm using today is called Smithson and I chose it because it looked a lot like the example font that was used and I can just slide it in and size it however I need. There we go. Now the one last thing that we need to do is weld all of this together because we do have overlapping areas. So I'm going to select it all and then choose weld down here at the bottom of my screen. That's going to weld not only the font, but it's going to weld the font or the text rather to my design. Now I can come over to make it. This is the easy part. Cricut definitely makes the workflow easy for uh, the cutting process. So a 12 by 12 mat, I need a 12 by 12 sheet of vinyl. I'm gonna click continue. And now it's going to connect to my Cricut Maker via Bluetooth. I'm going to set my base material. So I'm gonna go to browse all materials. The one that I like to use is the premium outdoor vinyl. And what I'm gonna do is also, I'm just gonna go ahead and make that a favorite. I always come in and just search for it, but if I make it a favorite, then uh, from now on, let me show you, I can click over to favorites and it'll be there in my options. I'm gonna leave my pressure at default and then I can go over to my machine, go ahead and load the tools and material, which the tool's already in there. It's just the fine point blade, but uh, I can load the vinyl on my mat in the machine 
and then we will take it from there. So let's see what that looks like. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about what we have here. Of course, I have my Cricut Maker cutting mat. I have for tools, a pair of scissors, weeding tweezers, a scraper, of course, my handy dandy tape measure. Then for the project itself, I have this cutting board. Now this is actually, interestingly enough, it's called a pizza peel. I didn't know what that was, um, but it actually, in my opinion, makes a pretty nice shape for these home decor items. Then I have some permanent adhesive vinyl. This is Oracle 651 right here. I'm doing a matte black. And then I have some blue grid transfer tape. And this is about 40, 41 inches of a just buffalo plaid uh, wired ribbon. It is wired and it's two and a half inches. So the first thing I'm gonna do, let's set our transfer tape out of the way. And I'm going to line up my vinyl on the cutting mat. And I'm going to load the cutting mat into the Cricut. Press the load button. And what it's gonna do is because it's already connected through the software, it's gonna prompt me to let me know that I can go ahead and cut the material when the Cricut button starts flashing. All right, so the cutting is finished. So I'm gonna unload my mat. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the vinyl. Now, if I don't want my vinyl to curl, because my mat is relatively new, I'm gonna flip it over and peel the mat from the vinyl instead of the other way around. So now I'm gonna go through the weeding process. If you're unfamiliar with weeding, then basically what you wanna do is peel off all the vinyl that you don't need. So I'm gonna trim around this and then we'll weed it. So after trimming off the excess, I'm gonna take my weeding tweezers and I'm just gonna start in any corner and I'm just going to peel off. Now it's important, let's close that. It's important that you got a good cut, otherwise you will have problems weeding. Uh, but typically Cricut machines, unless your blade is going dull, you should get a good cut out of them. So I'm pulling with one hand and using the other hand to help it along. Now with the majority of it removed, I'm gonna go back in and weed out all the inside pieces using my weeding tweezers. All right, so after the weeding is done, go ahead and grab your transfer tape. All right, I'm gonna move it out the way. And I can actually, let's move this over. Let's talk about sizing. Remember I said I drew the rectangle? What I did before we even started in the software was to measure the size, okay? So that is actually 11 and a half. And then when we talked about the 12 inches, there we go. So our sizing should be pretty accurate. What I can do is go ahead and position this where I want it to be. And of course I can put this on either side. So this has the logo. If I'm not comfortable with that, I can flip it over and we can position it here. The only difference between the two sides is this does have a slightly angled edge because it is a pizza peel. So if I position this where I want it to be, all right, let's leave that there. Then I'm going to take just the tip of my uh, transfer tape, remove it from the backing. I'm gonna hold my transfer tape on the sides with my pointer finger and my thumb. And then I can use these three fingers on the edge, okay? And I'm going to hold down one side, make sure it stays in place. And I can just let it touch down. Okay, there's a reason, I promise. Give it the good old squeegee. And then actually, it's still got a little sideways, but if you get, I'm trying to straighten this line with the line at the bottom of my board. Okay, but use your transfer tape to hold your design down and then you can even pick it up and look at it. You can take measurements if you want. If I wanna check and make sure that I'm even, let's see, three fourths of an inch, three fourths of an inch. I can measure top to bottom if I want. I can measure from the line. 
So I'm looking at four and a half and only four and a quarter. So I'm still a little bit crooked. You can also do this using um, like masking tape if you want to tape your design down. All right, so once we're straight, I know we already burnished it, just burnish it a little bit again. And then I always keep my hand on like one part of the transfer tape and I'm gonna peel up with the other. Okay, once I've peeled up the vinyl, slide this out and then either with my hand or with the a scraping tool, I can just slide this back into place. Okay, that way I know that it's straight and it takes the guesswork out of the situation. I'm going to burnish again. Now, I want to burnish well this time. Vinyl isn't really a huge fan of adhering to wood, but our wood pizza peel is a very smooth surface and hopefully we should get some good results. You can also seal the wood first if you want. Some people use like a polyacrylic or a Mod Podge and uh, sometimes that works. I prefer the, the unfinished wood, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Let's see. All right, so peel slow just in case. But remove your transfer tape. There we go, a piece of cake. Now you can save this and reuse it. So set it off to the side. Oh, and you know what? I missed a weeding area here, so you can still remove that. All right, so technically the design part is finished. What I can do is just take my ribbon. Now I gotta, I'm not gonna lie, this ribbon is probably my favorite. I use it for a lot of projects. And I'm just gonna try to center it. Kind of like you would shoestrings, you know? I am gonna scrunch it in the middle and then wrap it around and we're gonna tie it just like a regular bow. Super easy, just like if I was, you know, tying my shoes. Okay, from here, you wanna go ahead and spread out your ribbon. You don't want it scrunched forever. Give yourself a nice loop. Pull this one around. What I try to do is push it through not scrunched, okay? So that when I pull it through, I have another nice loop, okay? Now I can take a minute, get my loops aligned, and if I find the right pieces to pull, I can just tighten my bow. Now, because this is wired ribbon, you really have quite a bit of wiggle room to be able to work with it. And I, make it, I can make the bow big, I can make the bow small, depending on the size that I want my tails. Like I said, this was about 40 inches. So about, you know, three, three and a half yards and you can get a nice bow. And I'm gonna let you in on a secret. If you take your scissors and you fold your ribbon in half and I'm going to cut, all right, I got my wired edge here. I'm going to cut an angle inward towards my folded edge. So when I open that up, I have a nice little V cut. Okay, so from the outside edge inward. Don't take too much off because you don't have a, a whole slew of extra ribbon, but give yourself nice little tails and you can put this up or down. These have a nice hole so you could hang it if you wanted to, but for the most part, our project is now finished and it was super easy, super simple, a little bit of vinyl, one pizza peel or a cutting board. Cutting boards work really well. It's the same basic concept. And I have a really nice gift. And uh, if I can contain my excitement, then I will give this to them at the housewarming. And if not, I will give it to my sister-in-law tomorrow. So <laughs> depending on how I feel, but there we go. Super quick, super easy. Um, your investment here is probably I don't know, around $15. Uh, and it's just a really nice, simple project. So guys, how did you feel about our family monogram cutting board? Now, I think it was really easy, really simple, 
easy to follow along with, easy to personalize for your very own project. It's great for beginners, great for gifts, just great all the way around. I can't say enough about it. Now, if you have any questions or comments, definitely make sure you leave those down below. I love hearing from you guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Keep supporting the channel and we can keep bringing you these great tutorial videos to help you along with your crafting journey. But for today, I'm gonna wrap it up and guys, we will see you again next time.